I've decided I'm gonna quit PC gaming. For now, at least. Let me explain. See, recently I've had way too many game crashes, blue screens, and overall lack of quality games to even choose from on the computer that trying to play PC games right now just really just doesn't make sense. I've been playing games for a very long time, my entire life pretty much. I can remember playing Mario on the Nintendo Entertainment System, or Toe Jam and Earl on the Sega Genesis in my grandma's house, in back in the little backroom den with the TV that you had to turn a dial on to get the right channel. You guys might not know about those, but trust me, it was a thing. Nowadays, it feels like there's always some sort of complex agenda that needs to cater to some group of people, or whatever game company is creating the next big game has to figure out how to shove a bunch of DLC and microtransactions into it, and maximize profits, and completely forgets to, well, finish the game. It just feels like gaming has had a lot of, well, enjoyment and freedom taken away from it. But, as fate would have it, I happened to be scrolling TikTok the other day and, well, I ran into a video that seemed like it really spoke to my situation. Hey guys, Gregory here. Are you thinking about quitting PC gaming? Are you tired of your computer blue screening on you constantly? Are you sick of the game you're trying to play crashing just out of nowhere when you're about to get a kill and win? Well guys, I got the solution. The Pow Kitty. Now don't let this little Game Boy looking device fool you. This thing has over 30,000 games back when things were simple. After seeing this video, it really felt like this could be a product that could definitely bring back the excitement and joy in gaming again for me. So I needed to pick this thing up. So, well, let's check out the Pow Kitty. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Chris with Tech5. Today we are going to be looking at the Pow Kitty. Now this is a handheld emulator type of device that has around 25,000 games on it. Oh my god! That's a lot. And these are a bunch of the different games that I actually grew up with, so I was really excited to get my hands on this thing when I saw this. Now, one of the big reasons why I thought this would be something that you guys might be interested in is because I think this is a really good gateway or connection to get back into games that can get rid of the distractions. There's a lot of different obstacles and distractions that come with modern gaming, and for me, uh, these are a lot of the games that I grew up with and really have a nostalgia factor for me that really were peak gaming for me. It, it, I, I was just really wanting to get a hold of this and share this with you guys. I think that you guys might like it. I don't know. We're going to check it out, see what you guys think. Let's get to it. As I began to open the package, I expected to see a bit more security with the shipping as I've constantly seen these things on the internet with a ton of tape and heavy duty packing jobs. So to see it in such a big box without any bubble wrap in it was a bit off for me, but I won't hold that against the Pow Kitty. The exterior box was neat and came with very minimal nomenclature, which really isn't necessary for a device like this. The inside comes with a few kitty stickers that you can put on the front interface and a data cable that allows charging and the editing of the files on the Pow Kitty itself, whether you want to add games or take them away. It was actually good to see this little foam insert that they had on the device. I was complaining about the packaging earlier and its security, but seeing them put this here and protecting the screen was definitely good to see. The device has quite a bit of buttons on it and it seems like it might be a little bit difficult to master as far as knowing what every button does, but it's actually a clean design and the screen just really looks clean coming on. There's quite some deep blacks going on on this thing, and I think that may be because it has an IPS panel on it. Speaking of the specs, the Pow Kitty comes with a 3.5 inch IPS panel for the display, 1.5 gigahertz quad core CPU, a built in 16 gigabyte memory, along with the 125 gigabytes memory SD card. So you can load up all the games this thing can hold. It also comes with a lithium battery that should allow for 8 hours of continuous play. Now there are various models to the Pow Kitty with similar specs, but this one in particular came preloaded with 25,000 games from all sorts of consoles, from the original Nintendo, 
the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, PlayStation, PSP, Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, on and on. All sorts of consoles from the golden retro era. This was honestly so much fun to get to play on some of my old favorites. Buck Bumble on the 64 had the best title screen music to exist on a video game ever to date in my opinion. Running around on Toll Jam and Earl felt like I was back in my grandma's house playing Sega in the den. The nostalgia was laid on thick with this thing, and honestly, I was loving it. I'm not going to try and tell you everything was good starting off with this thing, because out of the box, I was having some screen flickering and audio issues at first that honestly were concerning. But after a reboot, this was something that seemed to fix itself. Sticking to the cons of things, the device is somewhat annoying when it comes to trying to charge the device because, well, it won't stay shut off. And whenever the device is left on idle, it will switch to a demo mode that starts playing random games. Demo mode is cool for demonstration purposes, but it was annoying while trying to charge it. However, it's possible this is a setting that can be turned off somewhere buried in the setting controls, so I'll give them the benefit of a doubt here. Another huge L that I have to give the PAL Kitty was not having the greatest Dreamcast game on the emulator, Sonic Adventure. I felt that was pretty much the flagship game for the Dreamcast, and it wasn't even on the PAL Kitty. Now these are my biggest complaints that I have for the PAL Kitty, but it was extremely satisfying to get to play these games. It did have all the great Zelda games like Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, and basically every Pokemon game that was on the Game Boy, and those are big wins in my book. You're able to customize the UI and menu fonts, and if you happen to like a theme better than the other, go with it. This device can also be used as an ebook reader or video player, giving it some sort of multi-functional use, though I'd never use it for that. I just want a game. In short, I think the price tag on this thing is definitely worth it. I've had a great couple of weeks just playing on this thing. It's been fantastic. A lot of nostalgia factor going on, I'm sure, but I've, I've loved it. And I even think that the games look better on this. Now that could be my bias talking because of the vibrance and brightness of the screen, but I don't know. It, it seems like it to me. So I've had a great time. Maybe you'll have a great time. If you're interested in picking this up, I'll have some links in the description so you can do that. And if you do have any questions, guys, feel free to ask, drop a comment. I do my best to help on this channel. That's gonna do it for the video. And remember, it's a vibe, a tech vibe. We'll see ya. Uh, go play some games.